Welcome to Decode Your Burnout, the podcast where we crack the code on burnout based on three primary factors, your programming, environment, and personality. We also feature experts who debunk the myths about what it takes to be successful in their industry and spin those tips to fit the workplace so you can optimize the way you work. I'm your host, Dr. Sharon Grossman, a psychologist turned coach, author, and burnout expert. If you're burned out and want to go from exhausted to extraordinary, book a free breakthrough session with me by going to bookachatwithsharon.com. And if you want to see how you're doing and what to focus on next, download the burnout checklist. You'll find the link in the show notes or go to bit.ly forward slash check your burnout. Now let's get started. Hello and welcome back Decode Your Burnout fans. I am very excited to be back here and I have a very, very special guest and I know you hear me say that a lot, but I really mean it this time. It is uh, Atherton Drenth, who is the author of Intuitive Dance, Building, Protecting and Clearing Your Energy, Following Body Wisdom and the Art of Intuitive Journaling. So she has written a number of books She's also a clairvoyant, a medical intuitive, and holistic energy practitioner that's been facilitating transformational healing for her clients. She's been extensively trained and certified as a medical intuitive and holistic energy practitioner. She's been in private practice since 2000, and she is also a compassionate teacher committed to helping others develop their full intuitive potential through yearly workshops. She has a private practice based out of Ottawa, Ontario. In addition, she is going to, she's here today to be telling us how we can decrease our stress, our anxiety by up to 50% by following three simple things. So All of this is going to help us heal from burnout and from all of this excess stuff that we're carrying around. I'm so excited to dig into this. Atherton, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's an honor. So, you know, as we usually do, I'd love to start by hearing your burnout story. And I've got quite a juicy story to share with us and how it's kind of helped to shape who you've become and, uh, and this message that I can't wait to get to down the road in this episode. So let's kick it off with your story. Okay. So um, when I was uh, eight years old, I had a vision and I was told that I was going to die in my 45th year and I just accepted it. I didn't, you know, think it twice about it. I'd had visions in the past and, and, and I just accepted it. And so when I entered my 40th year, I started actually preparing for my death. And uh, because I knew it was coming, I'm going to get emotional. (laughs) And um, but what I didn't realize is you can have this interpretation of what you think your death is going to be, and it ended up being totally different. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was 40, my health was rapidly decreasing. I was having lots of problems uh, with my health. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I was collapsing at work. I was had horrible migraines. And then um, I the doctors finally put me on stress leave because they said that, you know, my anxiety and stress levels were off the charts. Um, I had a, a corporate position. I was working, you know, 50 hours a week and, and I was just burning out and I was doing this on one hour of sleep um, a night. And, um, you know, it made me a star in the corporate world because I was getting all this work done. You know, I'd be there before everybody showed up and I'd be the last person to leave. And, um, and then I collapsed and uh, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, get up. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, um, I couldn't not sleep. So I went from sleeping one hour a day to sleeping 23 hours a day. And I got weaker and weaker and weaker. And it got to the point where I couldn't drive. I couldn't uh, look after my family. I couldn't even go to the bathroom without having to crawl on my hands and knees. And meanwhile, the doctors are just saying it's stress and anxiety. There's nothing wrong with you. You're faking it. You just want time off work. And it was, it, it was this huge fight that was going on. And, uh, and I just remember um, lying in bed one day and, uh, and I woke up to find an angel standing beside my bed. 
And she looked at me with a great deal of love and compassion. And she said, it's your choice. She says, you can live or you can die. And my first response was, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just take me. I just, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm so stressed and I'm sick of being sick and I'm sick of being tired all the time. And, and I was really, you know, I was a, I used to call myself a double A, you know, I just, I had a mission. I was employed to do a job. I was a hard worker. There were things that were really important to me and I just couldn't meet my obligations anymore. And as I started to lift up outside of my body and I was just about to go into the light, all of a sudden I just like, oh, I'm leaving my family. I can't do this. I can't leave my husband alone to raise two teenager, teenagers because he traveled all the time. I was, I was the person who looked after everything because he was gone all the time. And I just remember floating um, up towards the ceiling and I said, can I change my mind, please? And it was like hearing this cosmic chuckle. And the next thing I know, I'm back in my body and I wake up the next morning and I'm a totally different person. All of a sudden, I can sit up, I can walk, I can, I'm feeling so much better. And I had been encouraged by a, a young healer uh, who did cranial sacral work to go and see a healer who did energy work. I had no idea what energy work was. I was uh, trained as a lab tech. I was, um, uh, I was used to things being very logical. And what's this thing called energy work? I don't understand this. So I, I realized that I had to go and see this guy who did this thing, who did energy work. And when I got there, I was absolutely horrified at what I had spent four hours driving to get to. Because you have to remember, I went from not being able to drive at all to suddenly having to drive myself four and a half hours to go and see this young man. And how I even got there is a miracle because I, I could barely sit up. And I just said, God, you want me there that badly? Then you make it happen. And the next thing I know, I'm walking through the door. And I get there and I sit down and I'm looking across the room at this young man uh, who looked like he was all of 16 years old. And he's waving his hands over this person's body. And I thought, really? This is what I drove four and a half hours for? This is what's going to happen to me? I was, I was horrified. And I was, got up to leave. And all of a sudden, I hear this voice said, stay. And I just sat down like, where did that come from? And um, I had a very interesting thing happen. The door opened up. And there was a woman who was being carried in. She must have been in her mid-50s. And she was being carried in by her husband. Sorry, I get very emotional when I tell this story. <laughs> I apologize. It's completely um, So this woman is being, uh, who's in her mid-50s is being carried in by her husband and an elderly woman who looked like she was in her 80s. And her leg was like six times bigger than it should be. You couldn't even see her toes. Her, her leg was that swollen. And they laid her down across from me and they started to unwrap her leg and it was totally black. Well, I've worked in a lab and I've worked in a hospital for 12 years and I'm looking at this and I know gangrene when I see it. And I said to her, shouldn't you be in a hospital? And she said, well, I'm American and I've just been discharged. They want to amputate my leg. And they told me that uh, in order for us to afford the operation, my mother has to sell her house. We have to sell our house and we'll be bankrupt. And so we've come to see this young man by the name of Larry, Larry Steele, to see if he can help us. And I just thought, I remember thinking, good luck, you know, because this is nuts. So then it's my turn to get up on the table. And the minute this young man touched me, I just realized that my whole life had changed. It was just an instant. And I realized that he knew what was wrong with me. And he looked at me and he told me what was wrong with me. And it ended up being confirmed by biopsy uh, two days later. I ended up going back to see him every two weeks and I would go down for two days and I'd have five sessions a day and I'd stay at a hotel. Wow. And absolutely every time I went down there, that door would open up and that woman would be carried in by her elderly mother and her husband. And over the next three months, I saw that woman's leg go from black to green to blue to pink to walking and totally healed. Wow. And I needed, I needed that visual confirmation that this, whatever this young man was doing, even though I could feel the changes in me and I could feel myself getting stronger and stronger and getting healthier, um, and that his diagnosis was so accurate after 20 years of you know seeing specialists and doctors and how he just knew, like how did he just know? And they told me it would be two, two and a half years before I could go back to work. And he had me back at work in three and a half months. And 
all of a sudden I realized all this stress and anxiety that I'd been living in my life was me being out of harmony with who I was really, who I really was. And I started to go down this very fascinating journey of starting to really take a look at me and my energy and who I was and where does true stress and anxiety come from? And then one day out of the blue, he said, you know, you can do what I'm doing. And I thought, well, you know, I think you're a little crazy here. But I decided to do the training just because I was curious. You know, the, the lab tech in me, the science part of me wanted to know how did this work mm -hmm. and how did he know? And the next thing I know, I realized that I had finally found myself, that everything that I had been grown up to believe in myself, um, all my intuitive abilities were all coming into one place and now I could help others. And that just blew me away. So I spent the next year getting trained and certified as I slowly started to engineer myself out of my corporate position. And uh, I opened up my own practice um, and I had a full-time practice within three and a half months. And what I've learned through energy work is, first of all, it's important for your, your readers to understand, your listeners to understand that everything is made out of energy. And we know this to be true because you take two tuning forks and you tap them, uh, you tap one tuning fork, the other tuning fork will start to sing. And we know that there's an energy field around the human body called an aura, and we know it exists because we can take pictures of it now. And what healers do, what energy medicine practitioners do, people such as myself, we know that there are there, you can have blocks in your energy field that can create problems physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. And our job is to go in and be a guide to help people understand where those blocks are and then help them to gently release it because the body knows how to heal itself. The body's very wise and knows exactly what it needs. All you've got to do is remove the obstacles. So one of the things that really astounded me in my practice was I noticed that there was this pattern that in clients that I was seeing where they had, you know, they were suffering for a lot of stress and anxiety. I mean, I was seeing a lot of therapists. I was seeing, uh, uh, I was seeing uh, social workers. I was seeing teachers. I was seeing people who were of service and they were very committed to being of service, but their stress and anxiety levels were off the charts. And what I found in every one of these instances is that once you got past the physical, what was going on at the emotional level was they were battling their egos. And, and what I was finding in my work with them and my work with myself is that we believe our egos. We think our egos are the truth and we don't think we can escape our egos. And our ego is uh, that part of ourselves that is either you know, telling you that you're the only person who can save the world and you're always right, or you're a piece of shit who can't do anything right. And we are constantly in battle between the, this is who I think I should be, and this is who I'm afraid I might be. And it creates all this stress and anxiety. So I was starting to find that, you know, we're told that um, if we uh, get a good job and get a good education, and we're married to the right person, and we have children, and we have this, that, and the other thing, that somehow our life will be peaceful. And yet it doesn't happen. And that's because our egos are always nattering away at the back of our minds, and we don't think we can manage it. We don't think we can control it. And what I found through the process of, of energy work and through these uh, three techniques that I started to put together called Three Simple Things is that you could go in and you could start working with your ego. You know, you can't destroy it. You can't get rid of it. It's still a part of our persona. We need our egos. But that doesn't mean the ego is in charge. And if you can still the mind enough and realize that you are a soul having a human journey, then that soul voice, that deeper intuitive self that's con connected to source can go in and can start talking to the ego and start asking, why do you believe that? Because we will have these beliefs that we think are the truth, but they're really the lie. And when you start to uncover the lie and you start to see the truth of who you really are, stress and anxiety just drops. So I love that. I love everything you've just said. I mean, what an amazing story, first and foremost. I mean, like, just total 180, right? Yeah. From even from like sleeping one hour a night to sleeping 23 hours a night and being up for only one hour a day, that was a total 180. And then your whole life completely shifting, going from being this tech worker who you know, you're in your head all the time 
to being somebody who's in your body and in your spirit and helping other people. So amazing, amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing it. You're welcome. Clearly, you were born to be this very intuitive person because there's not a lot of eight-year-olds walking around saying like I had a vision that I'm going to die <laughs> at 45 right yes. so you I think we all have intuition but some of us are more easily able to tap into it and uh and that said I think we can all learn how to tap in more so and as a matter of fact I just wrote a whole article on intuition because I think just like all the things you were just saying about the ego I think a big part of what leads us to burnout is the ego. And for people who aren't clear on what I mean by that, it's all of the fears, the I'm not enough, all the things that lead you to be so compelled to drive yourself as hard as you do. Yeah. To get the recognition, to feel like you're accomplished, to, you know, to have those external things in your life. Yeah. All of those things are just that mind chatter. And when you tap into your spirit, when you tap into your intuition, you get the truth of, as you say, who you really are. And I actually just did this exercise with a client. And it is amazing how people who aren't used to doing this work can almost instantly get into that zone. Yes. If they're open. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I think that we're so used to just being in our mind and that's just culturally like how we're raised because people say, oh, this is woo woo and this isn't real and this doesn't exist and you can't touch it. So therefore it's not there. Yeah. And I think that each of us has had experiences where we had a gut feeling and we ignored it and that never turns out well. Yep. I agree. Yeah. So but, I, you know, think, I think there is that possibility of, of actually tuning that up, tuning up your intuition and learning how to listen more so that you can let go of the ego and be more focused in on your spirit and your true self. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And um, curious also, as you're doing this work as a medical intuitive now, are you noticing that people get sick when they're in their ego? And like what the relationship there might be, if any. Uh, yeah. So, so first of all, everybody's intuitive. We're, we're all born intuitive. It's a natural part of who we are. Um, a lot of us are trained out of it because we can't be, you know, it's not tangible. Um, I was very fortunate in the fact that I had parents who were quite psychic and highly intuitive and they encouraged it. I just had to learn how to keep my mouth shut. Um, and now as an intuitive, I have to learn how not to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> um. What happens is that, um, so I, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to cite one particular uh, case history, if I may. So I was working with a woman who had been in corporate for 20 years, and she developed a problem with her knees, and it just got increasingly worse. And uh, she was very unhappy in her job. Uh, she went from having problems in her, with her knees to having to walk with canes, because she literally, her legs became twisted. And uh, she'd had all kinds of tests. She'd had all kinds of surgery. Uh, she finally realized that she needed to leave her job because she just couldn't take the stress and anxiety. It was you know, literally crushing her. Uh, so she, she left the job and she thought that she would start to heal after that and it didn't happen. So as I worked with her and we started to go into the story of what was going on with the knees, we start to unravel all of these uh, stories that had happened to her, whether it be as an adult or a teenager as a child. And it all boiled down to these very simple beliefs that she was a failure and that she could never accomplish anything. And it was this constant, constant cycle inside a uh, mind game that she was playing inside her head. And helping her to understand how to use her intuition and go in and start challenging those stories and starting to change her mind, she started to get better. And one day she walked into the office and she didn't have her canes and her knees were perfectly fine. And she was able to start living the life that she wanted. So the mind, the mind plays such a strong role in how people heal. It's when people come to me and they say they've been in a really horrific car accident. And I hate to have to do this, but my first question to them is, are you in a lawsuit? And if they say yes, I have to say to them that I can't work with you until you're finished the lawsuit. Because 
the insurance companies and the medical uh, companies need them to stay sick in order to win the lawsuit, which I think is tragic, you know. And once they've been through it and the case has been settled, then we can go in and we can start unraveling all of the trauma that has happened in the body. Because even if there's whiplash, what they were thinking at the time at the moment of whiplash can get locked into the whiplash and you need to take it out. And and for me as a practitioner and, and my colleagues as well, you know, there could be uh, how quickly could we reduce so many of the healthcare costs if we were allowed to go in and actually start working with people's energy fields? Because we know that blocks in people's energy fields cause, causes problems physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So, yeah, and I, I specifically like the tie in to burnout because what I find is that burnout is basically just chronic stress, and we all have stress that we're exposed to. What I find is that when we're not listening to the signs, that we, our body starts to speak to us in different ways, like pain and things just not functioning properly. And I, I always think it's fascinating the analogies that you can find in kind of like how these pains show up. And like with this client of yours, you were saying this job was literally crushing her to the point where her knees were just buckling. Yeah. Now, think about that. How many times do we talk about how we feel so crushed by our job? And this is just one example, but there's so many examples like that where you can find this really interesting symbolism that happens and mm-hmm. how these things show up in our body. I think just people aren't tuned into it. Yeah. We're not culturally aware of a lot of this stuff. So this is one of the big reasons why I want to have you here so you can spread the message and let people know that, hey, if you're suffering, there are alternative ways that you can manage the pain, that you can get back to yourself, that you can do so in a very holistic way and probably more rapidly than otherwise. And the other thing, and this really kills me, honestly, like when I see people that I care about who aren't open they end up going to doctors and getting all of these medications. And then they're having all of these side effects and additional problems. And like you get into the spiral of issues that never ends. And you're constantly just dependent on one physician to like fix it for you, but it just doesn't work. So I think there's definitely a place for conventional medicine, but I think that the best combination is where we allow for energy medicine to also help us when possible so that we can avoid all these foreign substances and unnecessary surgeries and things that, you know, especially because if stress is causing all of this deterioration, one of the things we know is that a lot of stress actually happens in the mind. And then it manifests in the body. So why not allow yourself to dig into those beliefs and remove some of those heal from all of these programming ideas that you have lead you to work too hard and uh, give everything away, right? Or to stay so critical of yourself because you can never actually ever get to where you think you should be. Yeah. And, and I find that that uh, those uh, that con- that ego conflict that so many people have in their mind really is the root cause of all addictions, whether it be drug, alcohol, gambling. You know, it's uh, it, it's they they believe that that what their ego is telling them is the truth, and it's really the lie. And when you start to uncover the lie and help them to find the truth, then it's so much easier to overcome those addictions. Yeah. So, I think we've uh, we've now opened the door. To thinking in this new way, but there's probably people out there listening who are like, so tell me how I can do this. And I know you've got your three things. Yes. So, so take us through that so we can kind of get a sense of how do we apply this to our own situation? Okay. Uh, so through my work, I learned, I started uh, sharing this with clients and I noticed that there was this pattern that if they did these three simple things that it was helping to dramatically decrease their stress and anxiety and they were healing faster as a result. And, uh, and I was curious about what these three simple things, if they were actually doing it. So, you know, again, being the scientist 
can we actually prove this? So um, I partnered with uh, two colleagues, a research scientist and a naturopath, and, and I uh, put a proposal before them. I said, okay, I've got these three simple things. Can we do a study and can we see if what I'm seeing, what I think is to be true, is it really true? And they said, absolutely. So we got 30 volunteers. We had them do, do three simple things for the next 40 days. We had them do a survey on day one, day 20, and day 40. It was always the same survey, but we always changed the questions around. So it always looked like it was a different survey. Then what we did is um, at each visit uh, on day one, day 20, and day, uh, day 40 is we uh, measured their heart rate, uh, their urine pH, and their blood pressure. And what we noticed at the end of the study is that there wasn't a lot of change per se on the physical aspects, but the emotional aspect was totally, totally different. And we were seeing an improvement of um, people overcoming a lot of their stress and anxiety by anywhere from 30 to 50% which is what I thought I was seeing in my practice, but I wasn't really sure, but now I had the proof. And we had two, uh, two participants, and this was a blind study, nobody else who knew it was in the study. Uh, we had two people in the study that to me always kind of bookmarked the study. We had a woman who was losing her 10-year-old daughter to cancer, and we had a woman who was losing her 80-year-old mother to cancer. So they kind of bookmarked it. And both of these women came back individually and they said that if they hadn't done this three simple things, there's no way they would have managed to keep their sanity through this death march and, uh, and that it changed their lives. And the other thing that happened is people noticed that they were eating better. They were starting to exercise more. They were sleeping better. So there were all of these emotional components as a result of the three simple things. So what are these three simple things? Uh, they are the vertical axis, which is a grounding technique that grounds you into heaven and earth at the same time. It's a very, very powerful grounding technique, and it can be done in less than a minute a day. The other is a cord cutting with everybody you've been in contact with on that day. And then the last is dream time management. And so the vertical axis grounds you into heaven and earth. And it helps you to get in. It helps you to connect to that inner source of that inner divine. It helps you to hear your intuition, that intuitive voice. It's the truth teller. The cord cutting helps you to cut cords with everybody you've been in contact with that day because we are energy beings. We are we are an aura. We are a human being inside this energy field. And when we touch up against other people's energy fields, we are picking up static. You know, and we start to carry that. And then the dream time management is very interesting because a lot of people don't realize that when they go to sleep at night, they actually leave their bodies. And uh, we know this to be a fact. And when we leave our bodies, we go into a part of the dream time called the astral field. And we know the astral field exists. We've had mystics talking about it for thousands and thousands of years. And what happens in the uh, astral field is that when you leave your body, you go up into the astral plane and what a lot of people don't realize is that there's two levels to the astral plane. And the lowest level is where most people hang out. And it's where you have those really funky dreams where you walk into a bar and you have a beer with an elephant and a dog. Um, but it's also where you're going to go and try to resolve conflicts that you've had during the day. So you're going to go back into that argument that you've had with a colleague, or you're going to rehash the project that you tried to present to the CEO and it didn't work out quite well. And what people don't realize is that they can ask to be taken up into the higher levels of the astral plane and where they can work with the divine in solving these problems and where they can truly rest. So it's where you hand your problem over to the divine. I've had this problem with my colleague or this project didn't work out where, the way I thought it should. And I need a solution. And in the meantime, I want to have a deep restorative sleep so that I can heal physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And it works. And people were just astounded how by doing these three simple things, and it's really only five minutes a day, we would tell people in the study, do the vertical axis first thing in the morning and the last thing at night, and then do cord cutting with everybody you've been in contact with, and then set the intent for the dream time. And people were saying that they wake up in the morning and they feel much more rested and relaxed and they have solutions to answers they never thought that they could have. And, and it was helping to reduce people's stress and anxiety. And it just, it was, there's, there's such simple little exercises, you know, and it only takes five minutes a day. Amazing. I'm familiar with the work of Donna Eden. I know she talks about heaven and earth and mm -hmm. all kinds of other things that are, sound very similar to what you're talking about. But I love that you've kind of grouped these three things together. 
and are prescribing that as a protocol for stress, anxiety, and burnout. I think that is phenomenal. I, I really challenge people listening to this to take on the challenge and do this for how many weeks was the study you said? It's 40 days. You do it for 40 days. Do it for 40 days and see how you fare by the end of the 40 days. I think it's a worthwhile exercise. It only takes five minutes a day and it can really change your life. So thank you so much for coming on and sharing that. Um, if somebody is interested in maybe working with you, mm-hmm. given you know your exceptional skills and just, I know there's a lot of people out there who are really struggling because burnout can be pretty much life devastating. You know, it can affect your health, it can affect your relationships, it can affect your ability to do your work. If they're open to maybe trying this new approach if they're mm. it may be they're not really familiar with energy work like you weren't mm. but they hear your story and they're like i'm curious i want to try this i want to give this a shot where should they go um so in my book the intuitive dance at the back of the book is the study uh and it uh that even even has a survey that they can do themselves on day one day 20 and day and day uh, 40 um and they can pr- and then they can measure their own results by looking at the back of the book. So the three simple things are there. Uh, if they want to uh, try the meditation, I have a YouTube channel under Atherton Drenth and uh, the vertical axis meditation is there. It is the longer version, but once people understand how to do it, they can do it in less than a minute a day. Um, they can go to my website, atherton.drenth.ca. Uh, uh, if they want to know more about energy work, then they can read my book, Following Body Wisdom, which tells you what energy work can and cannot do. Uh, the, intu- the intuitive dance uh teaches you about energy and how to find out what kind of an intuitive you are so that you can learn how to manage your intuitive abilities. And then the, uh, the uh, art of intuitive journaling is just something fun to do to, to play around with your intuition. Um, I have a YouTube channel, Atherton Drenth, and um, I'm posting on there all the time and I'm on Facebook and I'm on LinkedIn. So you are everywhere. (laughs) I'm everywhere. (laughs) Amazing resources and so much opportunity for people to get to know you, get to know your work, and and even work with you for those of you who are really ready for that. So uh, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your incredible story, the work that you do, and these three simple things that all of us can do to reduce mm-hmm. our stress, our burnout by 50% in 40 days. How incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you so much in, allow- in, in allowing me to share this story because, you know, there are a lot of people out there that can really be helped by this. So thank you very much. Agreed. Agreed. Now, for all of you thinkers out there, I'm curious, what do you think about using energy work to reduce your stress and to prevent burnout? Now, if you're a feeler, I'm wondering if this feels like it resonates for you, right? How does it feel to think about your intuition and allowing energy to help you recover. And for all of you doers, I'm curious if you're going to jump in and take the challenge. Yeah, I'd be interested in that as well. Yes. (laughs) Regardless of whatever your personality code is, my goal here is to spread the word that burnout is a unique experience and that by decoding it, you can find solutions that are equally unique to you. Help me spread this message by subscribing to the show on Apple or Spotify and leaving us a review telling us what you think, feel, or do differently because of the show. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you can also leave me a comment or questions to answer in future episodes. And please recommend the show to anyone struggling with burnout. Of course, if you are ready to take the next step with me to decode your burnout, go to decodeyourburnout.com and I'll see you right back here next week. Take care.